I wonder if God lives in a small house, not confining but comfortable, if mementos from the years long gone litter the small walkways and family pictures decorate the living room, if the fridge is covered in our proudest artwork. I wonder if God's room is a garden or a library or a studio, if stuffed animals, childhood friends, and beautiful memories are scattered about, and boy, she loves her stuffed animals. I wonder if God is a passionate, quirky artist, with thoughts scattered like stars and enthusiasm being everything in between, if her creativity is as abundant as antimatter. I wonder if God has frizzy hair and loves to wear sundresses and go on adventures, if God wants to cut her hair in a whirlwind of rebellion, only to grow it out again and cut it short once more, if to her it was an act of liberation. God probably wondered if her creativity was a blessing as much as it was a curse. If her loneliness was the same way, perhaps that is why she gravitated towards art. Maybe she constructed our world long ago with ineffable language or with indescribable acts of beauty or with art, but the earth itself couldn't cure her isolation, so in haste she made Adam. She had wanted diversity anyways, but after a while he got kind of boring. So she conceived of someone more like her, a chaotic beauty who possessed her ability to bring life. I think in her quest for creation, she made evil too. God understood that a world could not exist without balance and while she didn't want her small creations to experience true wickedness, shame, and imperfections, it remained. The poor people had learned of pain from the apple tree. Their defiance and newfound suffering threw her into a frenzy of wrath, something she had not experienced before. Maybe it was because she hadn't loved so much and been disappointed. It took a while for her to truly forgive and God matured as her human beings began to understand more of the world she created for them. She began to guide more than punish and as ashamed as she was about her anger. God was willing to reconcile. So she conceived of a son who loved her creation as much as she did. She didn't want him to suffer in love's name, but he did anyways. She never forgot. She once again spectated as her creations exposed the best and worst parts of her. She didn't know whether to love or hate it, but she watched anyways.